E3 2018 is officially underway, and today on Saturday, EA kicked things off with their presentation. A 90 minute presentation, so a lot of people expected some cool things to be announced. We knew there would be something standard staples from EA, such as games like Madden and FIFA involved in the mix, and of course we were going to see more of Anthem, but I think a lot of people were looking forward to some surprises from EA, myself included. We've heard rumors about Skate 4 potentially being on the E3 show floor, so it was kind of exciting, honestly. I always love E3 season, I always love learning learning about new video games, and I was curious to see what EA would do. Well, the EA presentation has come and gone, and we streamed it over on the channel, but I know some of you guys probably missed it, so we're going to be recapping every E3 presentation and giving it a grade, talking about the high points and the low points, and what you might have missed out on. So, to start things off, we're going to be talking about EA, and talking about their presentation, and honestly, it was pretty lackluster, and I think that's actually being a bit kind towards EA's presentation. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's go over EA's 2018 E3 presentation, talk about the high points, the low points, and give it a grade. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. So first off, we're going to talk about the high points of EA's presentation, talk about some low points, and then come to a conclusion and once again give the presentation a grade. Now, EA's been working with some smaller indie studios on recent projects, the games like A Way Out and Fee, which are basically indie games that EA helps support and gives all the profits for those games back to those companies in hopes of working with them again. So I was interested to see what the EA originals were going to be for these smaller indie games, and we actually got a pretty interesting game called Sea of Solitude. It looks a bit like rhyme to me but I think it looks really cool it's about a person who's very alone and there's sort of a light side to them and a dark side to them it's a very stylized sort of action platformer with probably heavy puzzle mechanics game and I think it looks really cool I really like the art style I really like the direction of the game now maybe the person talking about the game was a bit overwhelmed at what was going on but all in all I thought this game looked really cool and it looked like a game that I'm definitely gonna check out this game is supposed to be releasing in spring 2019 so it's pretty high on my radar now. I'm interested to see what platforms it comes out to as well, but I think it's going to be a really cool game. Another game that was a bit of a surprise and actually got released today was Unraveled 2. Now this is another smaller indie style game, but it was very stylized, the original Unravel. It was a bit short, but it did get a really big cult following. And Unravel 2 is actually interesting because it, it's a two-player game, hence the two in the name of the game. You basically can play with another person in co-op mode, or you can play the game by yourself. There's always two characters on the screen at once though and like I said that game is actually available now EA went ahead and released it so if you have a PS4 or an Xbox one and you like the original unravel game unravel 2 is available and I think it looks really good and that was pretty much it for the high points of the presentation, unfortunately, because there was a lot of low points. Now, we're going to sort of go on the scale of low points, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, start out with the ones that there were some good qualities in there and then end with the ones that there was just no good qualities whatsoever or just lackluster presentations. The first game we have to talk about is unfortunately Battlefield 5. Now, I was really looking forward to this game. Obviously, a lot of people are looking forward to this game. They don't really like what Call of Duty is doing and pretty much just shoehorning in ideas and throwing stuff at the wall. And Battlefield 5 looked like it was gonna be a really good alternative to Call of Duty. It's not gonna have that futuristic setting. It's gonna have a World War II setting. It's going to have a story mode. So a lot of people were really looking forward to it. But unfortunately, they didn't really show too much of the game, which I thought was very puzzling to me because this is one of their bigger games coming out and they didn't really show too much of it they showed some multiplayer footage they showed buildings blowing up you can move your characters around that are in different sort of um, defense mechanisms and stuff like that which is a new addition to the game and I thought that was really cool but unfortunately they announced that this game will have a battle royale mode so yes folks battle royale is the new thing everyone is going to be shoehorning in battle royale mode they did not go into detail about their battle royale mode really but they did announce that there was going to be a battle royale mode and that's just really strange to me 
I don't understand the point of shoehorning in Battle Royale to every game now that's coming out because it's really a thing that's formulated and popularized by something like Fortnite or PUBG. And Fortnite really does it well. And there are some games that also do it well, but just to put it in, just to put it in, it just seems really silly to me. And it really seems like I think some people are going to be upset by that. So I was definitely disappointed that Battle Royale was introduced into Battlefield 5. I think it was really managing to stick out from Call of Duty by not having that feature. But now that that feature is in, Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be a bit more similar to Call of Duty than we originally had hoped for. Now, of course, we had a Madden presentation and a FIFA presentation, but the Madden presentation and the FIFA presentation didn't really go into a whole hell of a lot. They didn't really show specific uh, features from these games running on various platforms. I know myself, I was actually expecting Madden to be announced for the Nintendo Switch. Now, that could happen in Nintendo's presser, but I would have think EA would have wanted to have mentioned that. They actually showed off a mobile Madden game that's been re Revamped and it looks pretty interesting, but once again, that's on mobile devices, things like iPads, tablets, and of course your cell phone, and you don't really have a controller with that, I don't really like mobile gaming, but it was just so curious to me how small of a part that their involvement was for this presentation, because Madden and FIFA are pretty big staple franchises. NBA Live 2019 was also confirmed as being coming out this year, and once again, they didn't really show the gameplay mechanics of it, they didn't really show the on-court stuff, just more of the single-player stuff, and I guess that's kind of cool, you know, the story mode or whatever that everyone seems invested in, but when I play a basketball game, I'm in it for the on-court action, I'm in it for the actual basketball. I very rarely play my career mode in NBA 2K games because they don't really interest me. I play exhibition, I play season mode, I play people online with actual teams. That's the sort of stuff that interests me. So it was once again kind of curious, especially coming out of NBA Live 2018. I think a lot of people were a bit disappointed with that game, but it had a solid groundwork. So I was looking to see how they would expand upon that. We also got a really strange announcement of a new Star Wars game. And it was just like, hey, we're making a Star Wars game. It's coming out in holiday 2019. And that was it. They didn't show any sort of gameplay. They said it takes place between episodes three and four. And that was it. Very in passing. And it's kind of like, I don't get this, honestly, because when you look at something like the uh, Xbox, the PS2, and the GameCube, think of how many Star Wars games are on there. There was games exclusively for the PS2, exclusively for the Xbox, exclusively for the GameCube. You had things like uh, Knights of the Old Republic. You had things like Rogue Squadron, Battlefront. It's just so crazy to me how these Star Wars games are not being churned out more regularly. And I'm not saying that you should churn them out just to churn them out, but when you're a company the size of EA and you have so many subsidiary companies underneath you, it's very surprising to me that there's not more Star Wars games coming out. There's not, you know, dedicated single player Star Wars games. There's not offshoot Star Wars games. There's not racing Star Wars games like Pod Racer and Shadows of the Empire. The Star Wars universe is just so huge. And I'm not a diehard Star Wars fan. I like the original trilogy. After that, everything just sort of blends together for me. But it just seems like a really missed opportunity for me. Now, one of the biggest disappointments I felt was Anthem. And while I think the game still sounds very cool, I was not happy with the way they presented the game. They showed a cinematic trailer and then they basically had three people from the Anthem team up on stage talking about the game and it was just, it didn't feel right, you know? It, it was like a half hour long and they were talking about this game showing a lot of pre-alpha sort of concept art and stuff. I don't think people are interested in that. People want to see what Anthem is all about. It, it definitely has a Destiny sort of Halo vibe to it and a lot of people in the chat that were watching live were commenting on that. So I don't know, you know, I still have hopes for Anthem, but I did not like the way the game was presented. But arguably the strangest and worst part of EA's presentation was this Command & Conquer mobile game. They gave this Command & Conquer mobile game a live playthrough on their presentation. It was longer than how they talked about Madden. It was longer than they talked about Battlefield. It was longer than they talked about FIFA. It was longer than they talked about, than they talked about NBA Live. It was longer than everything except Anthem, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me because this is a simple mobile game like you look at it and you're like yeah, it looks like a crappy version of the original Command & Conquer. That's cool. Like, I was just absolutely blown away at how much time they dedicated 
to this segment of the show because it just didn't look like an interesting game. It's a mobile game. I don't think a lot of gamers are looking forward to a mobile Command and Conquer game in 2018 to the point of where you have to take up such a huge chunk of your presentation. And honestly, that was the biggest problem with EA's presentation. It's just poor time management. There was a lot of segments where, like the Sea of Solitude game, I was actually very interested in the actual game, but they had the developer for the game on stage for a good six to seven minutes just sort of talking about the game without actually showing the game. And you had that a lot throughout the presentation. Lots of dead air, lots of sort of cringy segments and stuff like that. It was typical EA. So let's talk about a grade for this. I Like I said, I was impressed with Sea of Solitude and Unravel 2, but everything else just felt very lackluster, almost like an afterthought. The fact that, you know, they didn't say if Madden was coming to the Switch. They didn't say really anything about FIFA 2019 on various platforms. They didn't say much about NBA Live. They didn't say much about anything except for Anthem and this strange mobile game. The timing, the pacing was just very terrible in my opinion, and there wasn't any big surprise. No Skate 4, no anything really. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to give EA's presentation a D. There was some decent stuff in there. I liked finally seeing more of Battlefield. I liked Unravel 2. I liked Sea of Solitude. Everything else, though, was just very piss poor, in my opinion. The fact that they're adding in Battle Royale to Battlefield. The fact that they just glossed over a lot of their main games and spent so much time on a mobile game and still really didn't answer many questions about Anthem just left a sour taste in my mouth. So not a great start to E3 2018, but hopefully things will get better. I really don't see how they could get worse, so that's a good thing. But let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of EA's E3 2018. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What were the high points for you and what were the low points for you? And thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. We'll be doing live streams for every E3 presentation and then recap videos as well. It was very hard for me to do today's video. I woke up and threw up and it was just not a fun day, but I am feeling a little bit better. I'm going to got some Gatorade. I've got some saltines. I'm going to go upstairs, go to sleep, just sleep all this crap off so I can be back at it tomorrow and thank you guys for watching this video if you really enjoyed it be sure to check out all the links in the description box down below we got patreon t-shirts social media all sorts of ways to keep up to date with rgt85 and i will catch you guys on the next video later RGT.